Hi, I'm Semen Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Power Flow Considerations in Power Filters. Now, there are two videos which are relevant to this presentation. Here are the links, and I'm also going to print the links in the description section of the video that you are now watching. So let me first of all define what I mean by power filters, okay? We have in general two types of filters. There are signal filters that, for example, we have a case in which we have a signal corrupted by noise, we like to remove the noise, then we can have an analog or digital filter, and we have a clean signal coming out. So this will be a signal filter. Usually there is no power flow here. In fact, the power at the output is usually coming from the power supply and not from the input. On the other hand, when we are talking about power filters, we have a power source which could be constant or pulsating like after a rectifier. And then we need to filter it out such that the load will see a constant power. For example, a supply of five volt, one amp, well, of course, it could change, but at a given operating point, you like to have a constant power. So do you need somehow to smooth out this power by a filter, which I call this uh, power filter. So let's have an example to sort of clarify this point. Here I have an active power factor correction front end, okay? The input, sig the input is voltage, and the current is now shaped by the APFC to be of a sinusoidal waveform in phase with the voltage and consequently the output power coming out of this block is pulsating is sine square as a matter of fact because uh, two sine uh, you multiply them and it's pulsating on the other hand you have a load which needs a constant power so you need somehow a filter to filter out this power such that uh, the output would be about constant. You may tolerate some ripple on it, but certainly this pulsating power is not useful, okay? So the need is somehow to smooth out the power, and this is done by a capacitor that is storing energy when there is excess energy from the input. This is the output that you need. This is the input, so there is an excess energy here. And then when there is no sufficient energy coming from the input, the capacitor is actually supplying this energy. So the function of the filter here is to store energy when there is an excess and release it when it is uh, required. Now the energy stored is V1 square, V2 square over 2. V1 and V2 are the voltages of the ripple, the peak-to-peak -peak voltages. And we can see that the larger difference, the more energy you can store. Or for a small ripple, if you like to have a small ripple, you need a large capacitor. We can look at it in a different way. I'm breaking down this uh, expression here into plus and minus. And what you can see is that the energy is related to the average voltage and the voltage ripple. So if you have a higher average voltage you can get by with a smaller ripple or a smaller capacitor and this is in fact is the idea of having this bi-directional dc to dc converter that will convert here the energy or the power to a higher level of a voltage and in this case you can have a smaller capacitor because the voltage is higher and also you can tolerate a larger ripple because if the voltage is high, you can tolerate a higher ripple. So then you need a smaller capacitor for the same amount of energy. So this is another way to go. Of course, it's costly. You need this uh, bi-directional converter. But again, the idea is to store energy when you have access and release it when uh, you need it because the input is not supplying it. Same idea can be applied to PWM converters, same concept of power flow. For example, here is the boost converter. The current in the inductor is sort of a DC plus ripple. So the power coming in here is pulsating. And then due to the operation of the switch, 
actually it's coming out as pulses, the power coming out the pulses, while we need a constant power. So again, we need a capacitor to store the energy when there is access and then to release it when we don't have it coming from the input. So this will be the same concept here uh, for the high frequency. So now let's have a look at the real problem that we may encounter many times. We have a rectifier and a simple capacitive filter and then the question is what should we put here in order to supply a fairly constant power to the load, okay? Now, of course, we can have a very small ripple here if the capacitor is made very, very large. But this is not a good idea because, first of all, we need a very large capacitor. And secondly, the current that will be coming in will be very picky, very high peaks because the duration will be very small. So you'll have extremely high current at a short time. This is really not good. So usually what you'd like to do to, here, to have here a moderate size capacitor with a capacitance which is sort of midway, let's say. And then you do have some ripple of the power. There's average power with some ripple to it. And then you add some filter to filter it out. And the question is, what are the options here? First of all, let me just clarify that there is another way to smooth out the power, and this is the lossy way. We talked about the capacitor, which is storing energy, which theoretically is not uh, losing any power. But there is another way. Suppose you have a voltage with a ripple, or a power with is pulsating here, some ripple on the power. Now you can sort of cut off part of this power, sort of remove it, to hit as a loss, and just leave out this part here. Now this, of course, will give you a nice constant power the output, a nice output voltage if the current is constant, and the penalty, of course, will be the loss of this portion here, which has to be larger than the ripple, okay? You have to have this portion here removed. And this is really what happens with an LDO. The LDO produces a constant voltage, constant power if the load is constant, but it is sort of removing the extra power to heat because the losses here are due to the fact there is a voltage drop on the LDO, there is a current, and of course this LDO is getting hot and losing the power to heat. Now the downside here is that if the voltage is going up, the amount of power loss will go up as, it, as the voltage goes up. And this is shown here. For a low power in, you have this loss here, while if the input is higher, more power coming in, you have to lose more power. And that is for the same current, of course, same voltage in this case. And so this is the downside of an LDO. There's another solution, which is explained in the one of the videos that I've uh, referenced, and this is using a BJT filter-based solution, in which we have a transistor, which is acting as a buffer, an emitter follower, and the base voltage now is filtered out by a filter, RC filter, now, in this case, the current is not passing through the filter, that is, the main current is passing this way. So here, we are, the loss is minimal. Not only that, we can make the resistor very large, so we don't need a huge capacitor. And then this will be a single pole, of course, uh, 20 dB per decade uh, slope, but we can make this uh, pole at a very low frequency, so that we'll get a fairly low ripple at this point, and this will be actually the ripple at the output. So in this case, the voltage on the transistor, as it turns out, is the voltage of the diode here plus this voltage. Again, it is explained in this uh, video that I have referenced. And it could be fairly small, in the order of, say, less than one volt, as long as the ripple is not very large, so the loss is not that much. However, if the ripple is large, that the ripple here is large, you do have to give some headway here to the DC 
so the DC will be larger so as not to go into saturation of the transistor to keep it always in the linear mode because an emitter follower is a linear amplifier so you need to have the transistor in the linear mode which means that the voltage on it is at least say 0 0.5, 0 0.6 volt okay so if the ripple is high you do have to add some more voltage and you can do it by adding this resistor which is increasing the current and therefore the voltage drop here is higher so the total voltage on the transistor which is the diode plus the voltage here will be higher now what about the DC to DC converter now, no question that a DC to DC converter is the best solution as far as the efficiency goes. In this case, the output is constant, so you have a constant voltage. The DC to DC can tolerate changes in the input voltage, but you have to be careful. It turns out that some of the DC to DC converters, actually all of them, suffer from poor voltage regulation or input voltage regulation which means that as the as the you have a ripple at the input some of it will be injected to the output now some DC to DC converter have very good rejection at certain frequency ranges but most of them will have some frequency range in which the ripple is really penetrating to the output at very high frequency it's okay because they PWM converter by itself is a filter, so at very high frequency it will filter out the ripple. At very low frequency, usually the loop gain is very high, so it's also rejecting the ripple. And some moderate frequencies, there might be a problem. So this is something to check if you are interested in a removing ripple in this uh, moderate frequency range. Again, all this is uh, discussed in this video that I've referenced. So what are the conclusions here? The BJT filter can handle large ripple. No problem with that. Of course, if the ripple is large, you have to increase a little bit the DC voltage across the transistor, meaning that there will be higher losses. It's a tracking type of a filter, that is the voltage at the output is tracking after the input. It has a moderate loss, however it has a slow adjustment to the input voltage changes because there is this RC filter, so if the voltage is changing it will take a while for it to adjust. In some cases this can be tolerated. Now LDO can tolerate moderate ripple, it has a constant output voltage, it has fast adjustment to input voltage, but it has high loss when the input voltage is not constant. That is when the input voltage is increased. Now the DC-DC converter it certainly has very high efficiency, has a constant output voltage, but it may have high sensitivity to input ripple at certain frequency ranges and to a step in the input voltage. And of course it is more costly. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.